Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cup, I am Penge and welcome to Interstellar Transport Company, which is a space trading supply and demand sort of game. Now normally that sort of game is set on Earth, good old fashioned Earth, and you're going to have something like a factory and then you're going to deliver goods to that factory via road or rail or whatever. But Interstellar Transport Company takes that up a notch. It goes, no, no, we're not going to just have a little factory. We're going to have goods being delivered to entire planets. And that's what it does. And we're going to be having goods delivered by spaceships and rockets and things. And that all sounds absolutely fine to me. So yes, we will go for a bit of that. Thank you very much. Uh, it's currently now in full release. It has been in early access for quite some time. It's been in early access for maybe several years, possibly. But it's finally out into full version. And if you're interested, there is a link to the Steam Store page in the video description below and we got a key for this from the developer so thank you very much developers that is very kind of you indeed so I think we're just gonna have a little go at the single player and just see how we get on Okay, so setting up the game, I've unticked random starting system, so we're going to start in the Sol system. That's just because it will make things familiar. You know, we know about the Sol system, we know what the planets are, and we know what's kind of vaguely habitable and what's not. So I think maybe starting there is going to help. Government colonising is suggested to be ticked, and that means that the planet's government, so Earth, will go and colonise planets, which is lovely. We're going to have 30 stars, that's what it suggests just there. 30 stars, it's plenty to experience all the content in the game. Uh, and I've bumped our money up a tiny bit. I think the default is 300,000, I think. So we've pushed that up to 400,000 just because that gives us a little bit of leeway just to muck about and do a few more exciting things. So rather than, you know, being limited by cash and struggling around the place and having to run the game on for ages, we've got a little bit of extra money to play about with. And we're going to start with no loan because why would you start with a loan? Because that's just a bit silly. And we are going to be playing as the Space Royal Mail. Of course we are. So the United Kingdom have spread to the stars and the Space Royal Mail have won the contract to do all the delivery stuff. So they've got fed up of delivering letters and envelopes and parcels and things to people's houses. They want to get bigger. They want to have whole spaceships delivering great big loads of, I know, goods and machinery and thousands of passengers and all that kind of stuff. So yes, we're going to be playing as the Space Royal Mail. Astronaut Pat is going to be in charge of obviously. And we are clearly red because that's the colour of Royal Mail. That's the colour of all the vans and the post boxes and all that. So we're going to be red. And then our two AI enemies are Obvious Evil Corporation. They're obviously evil. They've got an obviously evil shade of blue. And the Sinister Space Agency who have a very sinister green colour. We're going to have normal difficulty. The AI is going to have normal difficulty. I think we are ready to go. So welcome to the galaxy and a mighty big place it is too. So all these little stars are systems that we could in theory go to. Now at the moment we're restricted to our system down here which is the little green one which is the only one with any population in Sol. There you go. Population of 9.2 billion people across all the worlds and moons of Sol which is lovely but the idea of the game I think is that eventually we're going to be able to settle on all of these worlds. So when we start we're just going to be delivering goods around and Sol, but in the long run, you know, people might go over here and settle in whatever that's called. A crab. <laughs> it's just a giant crab in space. Let's leave the giant crab alone in space. I know, that looks quite far away. Rash al Haig. <laughs> Maybe just there. So, you know, they're going to settle in these faraway places. I love the fact that that's just called a crab. <laughs> It's just this giant crab just, you know, minding his own business and then a load of spaceships appear and try to colonise him. He's like, no, get off, I'm just a space crab, leave me alone. So, um, so yes, let's take a look at Sol because it's going to be a long while before they're going to start colonising any of these worlds. So let's go and have a look at Sol and it looks very pretty. It looks lovely. So we've got all of the planets that you know and love, all the planets you're familiar with. There's Mars over there, there's Mercury, there's Venus. Um, they're different colours because of this thing over here. So this is like the overlay kind of tool. And currently it's set for population. So uh, Earth is there. It's green. It's got a lot of population. Then there is the moon, Luna. It's got a little bit of population. There's 8.3 million people on the moon. And then Mars, all the way over there, does have some population, but not a lot. It's got about half a million people. And all these other ones, there's nobody there. But you can change those. So if we pick different things, I don't know, rare resources. So if we pick rare resources, we can see which planets have got rare resources. So Venus has got some rare resources, as has the moon and all that kind of stuff. But population for now will do the job. So let's go and have a look at Earth. So there it is, Earth on the 1st of January 2050, and it looks very, very busy. So there's all sorts of stuff going on. These things across the top here are gates. 
So these are kind of our delivery transport gate things. And if you want to move goods via a spaceship between planets or planetoids or whatever, I know moons and stuff, between two locations, then you have to own some of the gates. So you can dock at a gate, load your spaceship up, go to the other place where you're going, dock at that, and then unload all the goods. So you need gates for some things, for a permanent spaceship. If you want to use rockets, which are an alternative sort of thing, I don't think you need a gate for a rocket, which is a one-use kind of thing. I think you literally just chuck the rocket where it wants to go it lands they take all the stuff out and then they throw it in the bin i don't know what happens to the rockets but we'll come to that shortly but yeah it looks very good i like that also i've only just noticed it's kind of got a um i was gonna say day night cycle that's not quite right but the side facing the sun just here so currently the sort of usa and north and south america and all that that is lovely and lit up by the sun no lights on we come round here look and we can see that the lights are all on. So Europe's all lit up. That's lovely. There's India. There's Japan. Oh my goodness me. The southeast of Japan is very, very bright. Look at that. That's a nice touch. I like that. I like little incidental things in games because they didn't have to do that. But yeah, it makes it, it's a, it's a nice touch. It makes it nice and you know, a bit more immersive. So what we want to do is we want to look at the supply and demand of these places around here. And I mean, it makes sense to send stuff to the moon, I would have thought. It's very close by. We can easily get some stuff to the moon and back again. So we can just keep sending stuff to and from the moon. So let's have a look at what the supply and demand is. So if we click into Earth, we can see over here, I mean, there's an awful lot of numbers going on. There's there's num many numbers all over the place, but really we can use this lovely graph. So Earth is able to supply the things that are pointing downwards. So they can supply some food. So they've got a little bit of surplus food. They've got much in the way of water. They've got a lot of water. And they've got some consumer goods. And I think also they have a tiny surplus of medicine and maybe an even tinier surplus of oh, weaponry. <laughs> Lovely. But they do want for some things. So the Earth is demanding a tiny bit of rare resources and some luxuries oh right i see so earth wants some luxuries earth is not luxuriant enough <laughs> they want some really lovely things okay fine so we can send earth some lovely things so we know that earth can supply food water and consumer goods now what does the moon want let's go and take a look at the moon so there's the moon so the moon can supply rare resources which i think is a thing that earth wanted which is good and the moon is demanding food which makes perfect sense not much in the way of food growing on there and water and again not much in the way of water on the moon either so i think that's a pretty perfect fit was it rare resources that the um the earth wanted was it rare resources yeah the tiniest tiniest little bit of rare resources okay so we can set up a little trade route between the two. And we'll have a spaceship. It can load up on Earth, take a load of food and water. Over we go, we have some food and water. And on the moon, it can load up with rare resources, take that back over to Earth, and that can be a very, very beneficial little trade agreement. So we have to go up to here and set up a trade route. So let's do that. So it's going from, uh, it's going from Earth. Nope, that's not done it right. Hang on, add stop. There we go. Oh, I don't know where I've gone. Hang on, I'm lost in space. Lost in space. Okay, let's try that again, but not just end up in the dark abyss of space. So add a stop, Earth. Add a stop, the moon. So stop number zero is Earth. Stop number one is the moon. And now they're linked together. And you can see there is a red, there's a red official space royal mail line that's going from Earth to the moon, which means that we're going to be sending some stuff. But the minute we've got nothing to send it with, I mean, yeah, we could try and throw it. It'd need a very, very strong arm to lob it that way and some good aim. I would think that a spaceship would be a lot better. So let's purchase a little spaceship. And now, okay, right, so we need some gates. That's fine. We need to get some gates before a uh, person would deliver spaceships to us. That's absolutely fine. So let's go here. Let's get ourselves. I want to get gate number one. I, I, I like the idea of gate number one. There you go. So no owner. Now I've paused time. I've literally paused time. The second the game started, I went pause because I wanted to get gate one and you know kick off a load of other stuff as well. So we'll have gate number one. That's going to cost us 30,694 monies straight off and then one and a half grand per month to run. Crikey. Okay. So we want to make sure that we're earning enough money to pay off that one and a half grand. So we will lease that gate. Thank you very much. It's gone official space royal mail red. Yes. Yes, astronaut Pat will be very, very happy. And then we need to do the same over here. We need a corresponding gate on the moon. Hang on, was there an astronaut just there? Oh no, it's a, I don't know what that is. 
I don't know what that is. Oh, it's on this. Oh, it's on the surface of the moon. I see. I just sort of uh, clipped through the moon there. Never mind. <laughs> I've destroyed the moon, everybody. Don't worry. Right. Let's find gate number one here. Uh, gate two. Gate two. There. Gate number one. Okay, so gate one on the moon only costs just under five grand to buy and its monthly cost is 248 money. So it's cheaper than the earth one. So if we grab that, lease that gate, now we've got a gate on the moon and we have a gate over here on good old earth. And now I think we should be able to go and get ourselves an actual spaceship. So there's a couple of different types of spaceship. There's a general sort of cargo freighter type thing, which goes back and forth. And there is a rocket. Now here, obviously, it says in big letters, one time use. That means that that will get to its destination and then it will vanish. I don't know what they do with it. I assume they put it in their very big recycling bins and someone goes away and turns it into, I don't know, tins of beans. I don't know. So these things are one time use only. That's it. You send it one way, you load it with stuff, you make the money off it, and then that's it. It's gone. Whereas this can keep going back and forth. Now, this one here for going back and forth between the Earth and the Moon is perfect because it's not a very big distance. So they can do that nice and quick. They can just keep zipping around nice and quick. And uh, it can hold quite a lot of stuff. So these here, this little grid, shows the cargo bays. It's got 20 cargo bays, and we can sort of uh, designate what we want to put in those cargo bays. So we want to put food... So dry climate controlled cargo bays can hold food and rare resources. Was it rare resources that we were after? Hang on a minute. Uh, moon, show me. Oh, hang on a minute. It's going to get complicated. I don't want to lose this screen. Is it the moon that had rare resources? Oh, I'm going to have to... Hang on. Can I tilt it around like that? Rare resources. Yes, 52%. Yeah, okay, so that's good. And the Earth wanted rare resources a little bit. So that also holds food as well. That's quite convenient. So if we put ourselves, so that's five. So we'll have 10 of those. So 10 bays that can hold food and or rare resources. So when we load up on Earth, we can just chuck loads of food in there. And then this thing here is water. So we can hold water or <laughs> dilithium fuel. Don't mix them up. Uh, so we'll have 10 of those as well. And that's that ship sorted. So the, the Doing <laughs> the Doing the Doing 909 is now configured with two different types of bays and it can hold lots of stuff. We can put the food in it and the water in it from Earth. Then it gets to the moon. The moon can then load up some of the whatever it was, the rare resources into those bays. That can go back to Earth. Earth can then get the profit from those and it shall all be lovely. So we want it to launch immediately when it's been delivered. We have to wait for a little while for it to actually be delivered. So let's order our ship. It's going to take 25 days until it is actually delivered. So, okay, we'll order a ship. Thank you very much. It costs us 33 grand, which seems very cheap for a spaceship. That seems very, very affordable. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's brilliant. And the Sparrow Rockets are $935. And well, I might go out and buy one. <laughs> they seem even more ludicrously cheap. There are other things that we can do as well. So on Earth, there are lots of these little sort of circular bits. Uh, some of them are in weird places. Like that one appears to be in the sea, which is a bit strange. These are definitely in the sea. Um, it's just a bit strange. Well, that might be on an island possibly. Those two look like they might be in the sea. They're in sort of slightly weird arbitrary places. But whatever the case, you click on these and you can actually build some stuff. So here we could build ourselves a local office, a maintenance hangar or security services. And then that will be ours. That belongs to us. That belongs to the Space Royal Mail on Earth, which is lovely. There are all these other things that we could build, but we need to do some sciencey research stuff. You'll see up here that we've got a little kind of like a beaker, like a sciencey beaker thing with zero, which means that we've not got any research points. But down here, we can do some researching stuff. So if we construct a research station on Earth, it costs 80 grand to build it and 900 per week to keep it going. So we'll just do that now. We'll just create one of those. I think it's that. I think it's the little round spinny things that look a little bit like terrifying UFOs. <laughs> I think it's that. Can we zoom in on that? Oh no, hang on. No, we can't do that. Hang on. Uh, where did our space station research thing go? I, yeah, I think that's it just there. Oh, I can't zoom in anymore. That's a shame. I think it's this round thing. Um, so that will generate research points. And what we do is they're, they're points that you earn. And then we can go into the research panel and then we spend. Yes, I know I've got no research points. Uh, we spend the points on them. So we don't pick a thing to research toward. We could save up 
twenty thousand research points and then go and get all the research at once but yeah obviously it doesn't make sense to do that but it's not like you pick a thing and then you research toward that you earn the points and then spend them and there's loads of stuff in here the, the top half is kind of about different rockets and things so you can get the 919s and the space bus d500 which sounds great neptune rocket I mean, that's quite a lot of research points. But yeah, there's all sorts of stuff. Then down here, large offices. You can subsidize industries, which I did not get to when I had my little sort of uh, test run of this, just to make sure that I vaguely understood it. Um, so I didn't get to that. And you could put a large office, increase the speed of your ships when they're just sort of pootling about the galaxy and that kind of stuff. So yeah, there's plenty to do, but you know, we've got no research points. Can't do any of that right now. So they will start earning stuff. They will start earning research points, which is good. And I think let's let's treat ourselves to a building. Let's treat ourselves to a building. We don't have a lot of choice right now. We can either build a local office so it builds a small office, gives us 0.04% a week of planetary company reputation. So it just gives us a little bit more reputation. We could build a maintenance hangar, build a small maintenance hangar, repairs one docked ship fully and reverses deterioration by 0.03% to 0.07%. That is some very small margins right there. But I like the sound of that. I like the sound of a maintenance hangar. Or we could build security services for the somewhat extortionate 120 grand. That seems quite steep, um, but it gives us 1.1 AU protection size around the planet. Now, I don't really know what that means, uh, but it increases the system security level by 3%. I imagine the Earth is pretty secure. I quite like the idea of getting our maintenance hangar just to repair the ships. I think that's going to be a good thing because those ships are going to wear down quite quickly. You know, they're traveling the vast distances of space. So we want to get a little maintenance hangar in. I think 40 grand, we can afford that. So let's put one of those in. Lovely. I think it just magically appears and it's ours. So a small maintenance shed. The Space Royal Mail have got their first space shed. This is exciting stuff. So up to now, we've been concentrating on Earth and Luna. So Earth and the Moon. But we did see earlier that there is another planet that has population and presumably some demands. And that's Mars all the way over here. So if we click on Mars... Let's go and have a look at what Mars would like. So Mars, ah yes, now Mars needs some food and they need some water. Mars are desperate for food, water and also machinery. I don't know if Earth produces machinery, I'm not entirely sure. So we could, we could possibly start chucking some stuff the way of Mars. That would be good, that would make sense. Uh, there's a couple of gates at the top. It costs three and a half grand to actually get hold of and then 173 per month to just have. I think it's probably worth grabbing one of those right now. And again, gate one, because I'm Space Royal Mail. We're numero uno. So grab that just to stop one of the other enemy companies getting one of them. Now, I think they do get expanded at some point. The space ports do get expanded. But right now, if we just grab that, if we just lease that gate to go, do you know what? That's ours. And we've got one of the two gates. Thank you. Bye-bye. Half of Mars is ours. That's lovely. But I think to here... We send some rockets, because this is quite far away. This is very, very far away. If we send one of our actual sort of permanent ships that's going to, you know, the, the bigger ships, the proper cargo holder ships, it's going to take a long time to get there. It's going to take a heck of a long time. And let's just check actually what Mars provides. What does Mars supply? It supplies the tiniest amount of luxuries and an even tinier amount of medicine and then consumer goods and a bit of raw materials. But really, it doesn't supply very much stuff. So we would spend a long time sending our ship all the way over here to bring some food and water. And we're paying for fuel at this point. We are paying for fuel because we have to pay for fuel for the spaceships because they, you know, they don't fly on magic. So we have to fuel the ships. So that's a lot of fuel to come out here to then probably not make that much money off the food and water to then go all the way back again. So what I'm thinking is, let's set up a trade route between here and here and use some good old disposable rockets because recycling be damned. So let's go to here and create a new route and we'll add a stop going from Earth and add another stop over there to Mars. Okay, splendid. And now we want to basically send little one-use rockets with water and uh, food. And that's it. That's what they want. If we could put some machinery in, that would be great. Does Earth produce machinery? Um, if it does, it's an absolutely tiny... Oh, it's an absolutely tiny amount of machinery. 309. That's all. 
So yeah, these things here they produce an awful lot of stuff. 309, that's a that is a very small amount of machinery right there. Compared to the 131,000 units of water that we produce, that's that's a bit minimal. But okay, fine. So yeah, that's okay. We um we can we can deal with that. We can send a little bit of machinery. Um, there is something we could do when we get research. Uh, you can uh, sort of sponsor one of these sort of things. We can get ourselves uh, a, another factory down that will make robotics or whatever it was. Was it robotics? No, machinery. Robotics is further down. Uh, it makes machinery. So we get a machine factory and that will then up this amount. But it's not exclusive to us, I don't think. I don't think we would be able to exclusively have access to the machinery. I think Earth would just produce more machinery, more machinery generically, and then we could ship it. But then so could our competitors as well. So it's fine for now. We haven't got the tech to do that. So let's get ourselves then a rocket that is just sending food and water. And if we can, the tiniest bit of machinery. So we're going to here, we'll pick the Earth Mars Direct. I like that. So two stops, no ships at the moment. And let's go to here. So purchase new ships. And we want to have a Sparrow Rocket. Yes. Okay, right. Let's clear all the bay things down. So we'll have a machinery bay. So we'll have one of those. And then we'll just split it evenly. We'll have two food bays and two water bays. So we'll take a bit of water, a bit of food, and some machinery if we can. And we will have Earth, Mars Direct, deliver to Earth, launch it when it's done. Lovely. So that gets us one rocket. But then we want more. We want to, when it arrives at its place, when it goes, yes, I'm here, we then want to go to here. We want to reorder a rocket. So that can just keep going. That thing can just keep on going. It can just go, yep, more, more things, more things. Just keep sending more and more rockets whenever it's done. Now, I don't know if we can stagger it to, to say, when this thing is half the way there, send another rocket. Because you know, it's got to get all the way there and then kind of finish the rocket gets recycled and then it'll send another one. What if we just keep sending two or three or four at the same time? I'm not entirely sure if you can. I don't know. Maybe we'll find out when we go. But do you know what? We've not even moved time on yet. We've spent a lot of time on the 1st of January 2050. I think it's time we moved things on. I think we've got everything kind of sorted right now. We've got a thing going out to Mars to send it some stuff. And we've got one of the bays over there, which is brilliant. And we've got some stuff going over to the moon. I think for now, let's just kick things off. Let's just start the game and we'll see what happens. So stuff happens, Joe. It moves round. They have proper orbits and what have you. Now, at the minute, not a lot is going to happen. But Earth is very exciting to see. Loads of stuff's going on. So there's research stations all spinning around. And there's all the little satellites and stuff all just sort of spinning around the place. It's brilliant. It looks great. It looks very busy in the sky above Earth. It looks very busy indeed. So we can see that our competitors have bought some gates. Okay, so they've bought one gate there and one gate over on the moon. That's fine. Now, has anybody bought the gate over on Mars? Has anybody bought that? No, not yet. Now, I don't think we're going to be using that. Ah, but look, there's our first disposable rocket. So the Sparrow rocket is on its way. It's on its way to Mars. There it is, just sort of flying away all on its own. Oh, poor thing. So it's got in it one lot of machinery, if we pause time for a sec. So on the right there, you can see it's got uh, one lot of machinery. It's got two lots of presumably food and two lots of water. So that should arrive at its destination. Um, what on earth is that? What are you? A meet? Uh, no. Oh, hang on. <laughs> it's the it's the space cops. It's the space cops. That's brilliant. It's the space police. This is this is excellent. I like this. <laughs> I didn't realize there was space police in this game. There you go, keeping law and order <laughs> in their little space police spaceship, which I think is quite big when you compare it to say the size of Earth and stuff. But there we go. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Do you know how fast you were going? Oh, I don't, officer. Oh, you were going at warp 0 0.7. This is a warp 0 0.5 area. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to have to take your space license off you. It does look like a bit of a lonely journey for that rocket, doesn't it? I mean, it's got quite a long way to go. It's got 1.7 AUs. I don't know what the AU stands for. Astronomical units, possibly? I don't really know. So, yeah, it's making its way over there slowly but surely. What we could do, what we could do is, we could go to the trade route thing, and we could say Earth, Mars, Direct. We could just buy another ship. We could just go, yes, order a ship. Yes, please. And then we could wait several days. And then go 25, maybe wait till it's the 25th, possibly. Okay, that's a little bit slow. But okay, let's wait to the 26th. Let's give it a little bit of a gap. So yeah, order another one. 
and it's got exactly the same cargo bay combination. We can just order another one of those, and then we could order another one. Just go, yeah, okay, it's the 30th now, brilliant. Yay, order another one. And that just builds them. And then eventually, when that one does get there, I think, ah, now I wonder. I wonder if, when that one gets there, we'll order one. We'll order a ship. That's great. We'll order a new one. Now, look, another ship has gone out. I wonder if, when that one gets there, we'll order a new ship. And then when all of the, yeah, when all those other ones get there, so we will have kind of, how many did we order? Four. So there'll be four that are being reordered on a kind of cycle. That's very good. Right, also, ah, now, hang on, Paul's time. Oh, many things have happened. Right, they're nearly there. They're nearly at Mars. That's going to be good. However, this thing is working. Look, look at that. Look, there's a big line showing what's going on. Although, to be fair, I thought we'd set our... Uh, opposition to be blue, which I can see, and green. But that is not green. That is pink. That is pink. That is not green. It looks a little bit like Rainbow Road. <laughs> see, see Mario and his friends zooming along at the minute, lobbing banana skins at each other. So they've got a thing to the to the moon. Obviously, obviously, they're going to do that. That's the easiest thing they can do. So we are hopefully sending something out there. Let's just have a little look at our trade routes. Yeah, there you go. Earth Lunar Direct, lifetime profit, 5,669 money. So we've made five and a half grand, which is excellent news. That's very good. I'm happy with that. And that will just keep going. That will just keep going, I think, which is great. Now, there's a thing here that we need to pay attention to. I think this is like a colony ship. Yes. So that's a colony ship going out to Ganymede. Uh, where's Ganymede? It's a moon somewhere. Is it that one over there? Don't know. Where's Ganymede? Where are you going? Does it tell me if I click on it? Uh, right, hang on. Let me try and find Ganymede. Okay, it's out here. It's one of Jupiter's moons. Now, I don't know if we can find out much about it. There's a little bit of habitability. It's got some water availability, and it's got quite a bit of raw materials. But they're going to be missing out on lots of other stuff. So, yeah, there's no luxuries, and there's none of those other bits and bobs. So there's no rare resources. So we might be able to get something going if we could send something over to Ganymede. But at the moment, we don't know what's going on. Oh, it says down there, in fact. A ship has been sent out to start a new colony on Ganymede founded by the Earth government. Okay, now I think at some point in the research tree, I think you can unlock the ability to go and do things yourself. So these are also the Earth government going and colonising things. I think we can corporately go and do it at some point a long way down in the research tree. It's not going to be any time soon. Right, I'm interested to see what happens here. So our little ship is coming along, Spa 1, whatever it was, is going to come here, go to Mars, so in it comes, there it goes, and we got some money, and I didn't see how much we got. Well, that's just unfortunate, isn't it? I think, does that show us money? That's finances, okay. Oh, look at that. So, in terms of profit, we've made a colossal 729, we've made, th oh, there you go, that was a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it fluctuates greatly, does the profit. We've made three and a half grand in profit, which is okay. I'm happy with that. But we do have more of those things. And I've zoomed out back into space. Let's go back to where we were. There we go. So yeah, all these rockets. Yeah, there you go, look. So Spa 5 has been created because Spa 1 got there. So now that's been automatically reordered for us. And then it's just going and delivering more things to Mars, which is Excellent news. I'm very happy with that. Now, do we need to do something down here? Are they creating many more of these things? Hang on. Are there any more demands now? Is there anything else happening? They've still got demand for machinery. What if we built another one of those? What if we built ourselves another ship that just kept going here? I think that might be fun. Um, let's have gate, uh, I don't know, one and nine because they're next to each other. So let's get ourselves another couple of gates. Uh, nope, that didn't help. I, I, okay, using the WASD keys moves around the planet. I must remember this. So uh, let's get gate nine. And then on Earth, we'll get whatever gate we want. Oh, hang on a minute, where's Earth? There it is. Come back, Earth. There we go. So we'll get a gate on Earth. We'll get a gate on the moon. We'll create another ship that goes between them. Um, I know, do we need to do another gate? Or can we just add a ship to an existing route? We might be able to add a ship to this existing route just here. Can we do that? Let's give that a go. So yeah, that seems to be about right. Is that what we did? No, that's not what we did before. I don't think we put machinery over. No, 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 no not machinery. No, that's not what we want. <laughs> we don't want the machinery. And um, what did we want again? 
Okay, so the moon is able to provide an awful lot of rare resources. So I think maybe with our new ship, we have 15 little bays that can hold the rare resources and the food, and then just five that can hold the water. I think that's what we might do. So yeah, let's go to here. Let's order ourselves so the Earth Lunar Direct. There we go. Grab ourselves one of those things, and we will have 15 of those because they can hold food and rare resources. So we can take lots of food to the moon and then a little bit of water. On the way back, they can load that up with rare resources. That sounds excellent. And deliver to Earth. Oh, yeah, let's deliver it to Earth because we can deliver it to Luna if we want. But no, start on Earth, load it up with food and water and then send it away. So yeah, we'll order that, please. That is splendid. Okay, good. So I'm happy with that. So that's going to have another trade route, which is good. How are we doing for science? 248. How much is it to get a thing? Um, I kind of like the idea of this one first. 900 research points, but it gives us a 3% speed increase to all intra-system flights, which is obviously yeah, flying around our local system. So we will be, if we get there first, 3% quicker so it will be 3% better than our competitors because they will be a bit slow. And also that means that things will be 3% quicker to earn money, particularly these little sort of sparrow rocket things. So I think, I think we're going to go for that first when we get there. But yeah, it's a little way off in terms of research right now. Ah, a little thing just popped up there saying that there was a subsidy on getting machinery over to Luna. Can we get machinery over there as well? Do you want to create a new trade route? Is that is that what we use the gates for? I'm not entirely sure. The gates is just multiple. Ah, the gates is just multiple ships. So look at that in there. Ah, right. Okay, I get it now. So that one there says in gate one, Space Royal Mail. Hello, that's us. Uh, ship docked is the D909001, and just there, the ship docked is the D909002. I see. So if we only had one gate, we could only have one ship, obviously loading and unloading and doing stuff at any one point. And if there was another one, it would, I don't know what it'd do, just enter a holding pattern above the planet and then come down when this one had moved out the way. Okay, that makes sense. We've got two ships on the, on the route. We might as well have two bays. That makes perfect sense. However, if they're offering a thing for machinery... Because it said they're offering a subsidy on machinery, you get quite a nice, uh, quite a nice little extra bit of money for there. For that, can we add another ship? So can we purchase another ship on the Earth Lunar Direct? This might be a terrible mistake. This might be an awful thing to do, but we'll do that. We'll clear that, and we'll put ourselves ten machine bays, one food bay and one water bay. Well, not one, but one strip off. So five five water bays, five food bays, 10 machinery bays. Let's do that. And we'll order that immediately. Make that go. And that means we're going to have three ships. So do we need to buy ourselves another gate? We might well do. Let's try and keep all our gates in the same kind of area. So you know, group them all together. That's fine. Uh, and we will have uh, that gate, uh, whatever, gate six yes we'll have gate six please yes thank you so they're all together there's a very big kind of conveyor belt of uh, the rockets just going off to mars i think they are all rockets as well though so none of them are an actual sort of permanent ship like we've got going to the moon you know which you can reuse these are all just disposable things yeah they're all just the sparrow rockets just doing pretty much the exact same jobs so what's that one doing that's just holding food that's got five units of food our one has got two food one machinery and two water. Uh, what about the blues? What are the blues doing? You're just doing five lots of machinery. Oh, and that's got five lots of food. Okay, so Mars is doing pretty well for itself. It's getting an awful lot of stuff supplied to it. They still want machinery. They also want some colonists. That's interesting. Mars would like some colonists. Now, does that... What does colonists do? I don't know if we get paid for them. I'm not entirely sure. Where are colonists on this? Is that colonists? No, that's dilithium crystals. That's probably quite different. That's very different to colonists. I'm not entirely sure how that works. I don't know. I don't know where colonists go. There's a thing down here, destination, tourist, business, or colonists, but they are after some. Can we send colonists on a rocket? Is that a thing we can do? I have no idea. Let's have a look and see if we can figure out. Whoa, <laughs> that was a bit big. Uh, let's have a look here and go to the Earth Mars Direct and go to there uh, oh, right, hang on a minute. Ah, right. The thing has arrived on Ganymede. Pause, pause, pause. And let's have a look at this. So what can we do here? So passenger seating, any passenger type. Okay. Uh, oh, no, hang on. On a Sparrow rocket. 
Yes, we can. We can send people on a rocket through space. I would not feel very safe in one of those going to Mars. What happens at the other end? How does it come back down? Um, so if we said five of those, so five, five people, do we just say yes? Just Earth, Mars, direct. Just order that, please. Go into it. Right, ignore the reorder of that for now. Force this rocket to not be reordered regardless of how the route it is assigned to is configured. Yeah, so ignore the reorder of this particular thing. This is just a bit of an experiment. We'll do that. We'll order that and see how that's going. In the meantime, I think we've gone over to Ganymede. Uh, where was that again? Ah, it's over here. Oh, and it's got red. It's got a red thing on it, which means it does have some sort of population. It's got 180,000 people living on it. What do you lot need? Oh, you need the same that everybody else needs. Oh my goodness me, you need food and water and machinery. Okay, right, well, time to set up another trade route between Earth and Ganymede. So what I think we might do is, I think we might send two types of the Sparrow rocket thing. The first one can have food and water because they need that. Again, this place looks a little bit barren. It does not look <laughs> like the place where it's very easy to grow food and water. So yeah, we'll send some uh, food and water over in one, but they also need machinery. They desperately need machinery and some colonists. So I think we'll have one ship with food and water, another with machinery and colonists. So we can set that up. Also, I would like to send one that comes back from here with luxuries to Earth because Earth wants luxuries and they are able to provide a lot. I mean, who knows what luxuries come from here? What luxuries come from this <laughs> barren rock? Who knows? Hey, have some Ganymede dust. Apparently it's really nice. I don't know. Maybe it's good if you rub it on your skin or in your hair or something. I've no idea. But whatever the case, that gives us luxuries, which is nice. It's also got a surplus of medicine. Um, does Earth require medicine? No, it's supplying medicine, but it does need luxuries. It is demanding luxuries. So yeah, so I think then, let's set up those two rockets going from Earth to there to start with. Okay, so there's one type. So this is our water and food ship. So yeah, launch that immediately when you've got it on that trade route. On the Earth, Ganymede Direct. Because yeah, there's no stop off. So it doesn't stop off down at you know, your local Tesco or whatever. It just goes straight to Ganymede. So across to there we go. So that'll do one of those and that'll reorder itself, which is fine. The thing is, I'm going to move time on a little bit because I'm just going to do that a couple more times. Let's just push time on nice and fast, actually. So we'll have another one of those on the 30th. Lovely. And then when it gets to the 4th, we'll have another one of those. And we'll just keep building these things. And you know what? Let's have another one. So we'll do that on the 8th, say. So, right. Okay. So being right, they're going to reorder. So whenever they arrive on Ganymede, we're then going to reorder them. And then how about we clear that down and we have one with the people. So let's have two lots of people, two passengers, so presumably two colonists, I assume that's how it works, and then three uh, three of this thing up here, which is going to be the machinery from Earth to there. So if we move time on, then we order another one of those, please, and then we'll just send a couple of those. We'll send two of those, and they can also be reordered. So we'll send that on, I don't know, something like the 16th or something. There we go, 16th. Oh, hang on a minute. A thing there so there was no gate available for something to land. Uh, ah, hang on. I haven't got a gate. Have they got gates on Ganymede yet? Can we have gates? Okay, I'm not entirely sure we can have gates on Ganymede yet. Okay, our rockets might just crash into Ganymede. Okay, it's all fine. It's all okay. I'm, that message at the bottom is gone now, so I don't know kind of what it was saying. I'm not entirely sure. No gate available on Earth. For, oh, no. No gate available? Really? We've got three? There should be plenty. How many ships have we got? How many of those ships have we got? There should be plenty available. I keep pressing those buttons. No, go back to Earth. <laughs> yeah, we've got three. We should be okay. We've got three of them, unless one of them takes up. Ah, no, of course, because the spar rockets coming from it, the little sparrow rockets are being generated over here. Of course they are. So we need to get ourselves another gate, probably. I think let's get another Earth gate, and one of those can just be the one that launches the Sparrow rocket. Of course, yes, because they don't just magically appear from nowhere. They have to be launched from somewhere. So that makes sense. So we'll buy another gate, which probably costs us a lot of money. But never mind, I'm sure we'll make it all back when we go to uh, when we go over to here. Oh, look at that. Already, everybody's flying out to Ganymede. Everyone's like, right, Ganymede needs some stuff quick. Send them lots of things, send them lots of lovely things. So yeah, we're going over to Ganymede to do that. Okay, what have we got? Research-wise, 
We still can't do anything. I want to get 900 ideally. We've got an all right amount of money still. I'm quite glad that we give ourselves a little bit more to play with because, yeah, I think now we've got 100 grand. That's quite nice. That's quite a nice amount of money. It's going up. It's going up. It's lovely. So now I think we can just sit back and watch as all this does lots of stuff. These are all going over to Mars and it seems to be making a nice pile of cash. That's going over to Ganymede, which is good. Our little moon route seems to be doing quite well. Ah, yes, the obligatory graphs and charts that will always come with a game of this type. So, you know, when you've got a supply and demand and profit and loss kind of business game, that will always be a thing, won't it? So, in terms of overall profit, we've lost the least, I think, which is probably a good thing. Um, income, oh, we're well down on income, however. They're earning a lot more income than we are. Okay, expense. Ah, but our expenses are absolutely... What? How are they spending that much money? What are they doing? Monthly profits? Oh, look at that. Monthly profits in the last 30 days. These guys are making absolutely catastrophic losses. We're okay. Company net worth. Yeah, it's got more sort of even. Cash in hand. We've got a nice big pile of cash. And research points is all pretty even, I think. But yeah, okay. That, that's a bit worrying. Why have we got so few expenses? What's going on there? And a subsidy of 46.73 per unit is being offered for machinery delivered to Mars. I think we deliver machinery to Mars. Do we deliver machinery to Mars? If we don't, we should. We should definitely deliver machinery to Mars if we're not already doing that. Hang on, let's have a look. The Earth, Mars Direct. What do we do with those ships? Let's have a look. Um, yes, I think we do. Earth, Mars Direct has got the little machinery icon thing. So I think we're fine for that. So, okay, right. Stand down, everybody. Stand down. I think the first ships are coming into Ganymede. I think they are. 2,100 foot. 2,145. Yes, we're making some good profit there. That is wonderful. That is great news. Have they got a spaceport yet? Nope. I was going to say, I will buy one of the spaceport things because just because, <laughs> because why not? Why wouldn't you? Um, okay, let's go back to Earth then and the moon. Let's buy another couple of bay things over here. So let's try and zoom in over here. Seems we've got very little in the way of running costs. Let's grab another one of these. So let's grab gate 16 because, okay, why the heck not? And then let's grab one of these gates over here. Pause time for a second. It's hard to do while it's moving around. Let's grab gate 15. Yay, there we go. So we've got four. The greens have got, in fact, they've both got four. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so now we're looking pretty good actually. Let's move time on a little tiny bit. Let's move it on. And do you know what? Let's move it on very, very quickly. Move it on quickly. I want to get to the 900 research points because there we go. That means that we can get this. Thruster efficiency number one. 3% speed increase to all intrasystem flights, which is all of the flights that we're seeing here. So let's get that. I think that sounds great. Yes, please. We will have a bit of speedy flying going on. Yes, we've got very efficient thrusters now, which is lovely because that means things are going to go quicker and things going quicker means that we're going to be making more profit quicker. And that's all the Space Royal Mail care about, really. <laughs> They're not really that bothered about whether it's on time or delivered to the right address. As long as they make a nice big pile of space money out of it, they're fine. We appear to have stopped sending things to Ganymede. Why are we not sending things to Ganymede? What's happening there? Ganymede has got no ships. I thought it was supposed to be reordering its ships, like the other ones do. Why is it not doing that? Is that the button to do it? Reordering is disabled. No, reordering is enabled. Enable the reordering. Although, to be fair, the Earth Mars... Ah, it switched on. Ah, oh, it wasn't switched on. Oh, that's very unfortunate, isn't it? Okay, fine. Right, so... Do we need to go and get ourselves some new ships to do stuff? Do we need to just go and get ourselves a few little ships? So yeah, there we go. So um, do they still want the same stuff, actually? Ganymede, Ganymede, how are you doing now? How are you at the moment, Ganymede? Um, oh yeah, you're not really bothered about food and water. It's all the machinery and the colonists right now. Okay, fine. Let's have a look at that then. So if we can go to our trade route and go to Ganymede... Create a new thing. Sparrow rocket. Yeah, there you go. Conness and machinery. Uh, yes, do that. Order that, please. That'd be nice. And if we move time on a little bit, then let's put it on nice fast speed. We'll put it on to the maximum it can go. Then we'll order another one. So that can be reordered, which is nice. And then we'll order I don't know, another one about now. That'll do. And then we'll order one on the 25th. And that'll do for now. There we go. 25th. Marvellous. So we've got ourselves some ships going. They will sort of uh, reorder themselves, which is very, very nice. So... Do they, is that all they want? That's all they want. Now, can we, 
Can we... Oh, the demand for water's creeping back up. Can we now send something from here? I don't think we can. I don't think they can launch anything from Ganymede right now because we can only deliver it to Earth because we don't have any bays on Ganymede because they have not finished building the spaceport yet, I don't think. I think that looks like it's being worked on at the top. As soon as they do that, as soon as they build the spaceport, we need to be on that to grab one of the slots. I don't know how many slots there's going to be, but as soon as they put that spaceport in, we want to make sure that we've got a bit of that because then we can build a return thing. The spaceport on Mars has been upgraded. Okay, right. I absolutely hammered the spaceport. There. I'm thinking, yes, it's brilliant. I've got the spaceport, but no, that's the Mars one. Okay, that's fine. So we'll keep an eye when Ganymede's one is there because in the air, we can get a rocket, send it back to Earth, with lovely luxuries on, lovely Ganymedian luxuries, which would be nice. And then, hang on a minute, it says spaceport size two. What? Where? Hang on. No, spaceport size two. I'll have a bay, please. Can I have a bay? I don't think I can have a bay. I don't think it works like that. Maybe, maybe I'm just looking that wrong. Maybe that's a spaceport size two is just a generic thing that just allows these rockets to land or whatever. I don't know. Whatever the case, that's all fine. Let's make sure that they're reordering those. So are they reordering the rockets that we've just sent? We've just sent a big load of rockets. So I'd be expecting to see some more reds coming through. There we go. Beautiful Space Royal Mail rockets coming this way a bit more. This is very good. Uh, okay. We want to make sure... Oh, there you go. A small surface port. The spaceport on Ganymede has been upgraded. Beautiful. Um, do you know what? I will have that. Thank you very much. I've got one of those immediately. 150 a month. Pittance. A mere pittance. And now we can go to our trade route... Uh, Earth Ganymede Direct, do that, go from Ganymede, and then clear that, and just have luxuries. Where's luxuries? There. So consumer goods, medicine, and luxuries. Yes, one of those, please. So order it on that route to go back to Earth. Yes, order it immediately. Thank you very much. Now, I assume that is going to reorder itself. Yeah, okay. So we'll see how that goes first. We'll see what happens. Is it going to be popular at Earth? Is it going to make us a lot of money? I do not know. Let's keep an eye on it. When it gets back to Earth, we'll see how much money we make. Okay, our luxurious rocket is nearing Earth. There it is, just there, carrying so many lovely Ganymedian luxuries. Let's slow it down, just so we can see how much money it makes. So it's coming in. Luxuries got us 865 monies. That's not very much. That is not very much. Given that we paid 900 to actually get the rocket constructed in the first place, that is not worth doing again. I don't think. I don't really think that's worth doing. Now, it might be, it might be one of those things where do you get a permanent ship to do that? Do you get one of the more permanent ships to go and do that? Because then that can bring them back. So you have the initial outlay of 33 grand or whatever it was to build one of those ships. But then that's it. And then you can just keep that going on that route and eventually it will pay for itself and eventually it will start turning a profit. It just seems like a long way away. It seems like that would take a long time for those ships to get there. What can we do in terms of research? I'd like to get this. I'd like to get a Class B1 certification. The Doing 919, an early pre-warp medium-sized hauler, most useful for shorter trips requiring large amounts of cargo early in game. Space bus. Okay, that sounds great. I like the idea of the space bus. An early pre-warp small Class A ship, a slight upgrade over the Doing 909. We seem to be doing okay for money. We seem to be doing all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invest in a little bit of a research thing just here. Let's construct a research station on the moon. And that will give us an extra four research points per day. It's going to cost 900 a week. I think we can afford that. So we'll build one of those. And that might be where their expenses are going, the other guys, because they seem to have them there, look. They've got things here. Now, also, can we build a building as well? Is it worth building one of these things? Like a maintenance hangar would probably not go amiss on the moon. So, I mean, I don't know how that works. I assume that's an automated thing. So our spaceships either go to the moon or Earth and somebody goes out and whacks them with a space hammer and makes them, you know, worthy again of flying through space. I assume that's how it works. Not entirely sure. They've got an awful lot of vehicles going between here and there, haven't they? They've got an awful lot of things. Why have they got so many things? Sinister Space Company and obvious evil corporation. What are you guys doing? Why have you got so many ships going around there? I'm very suspicious. Are you evil corporation? Are you planning to turn the moon into a great big laser of some description? Is that what you're doing? Because you're very evil. And that's the kind of thing you would do. 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm a bit mystified as to exactly what they're doing because they doesn't really need much on Luna anymore. They're not really wanting for food and uh, water and stuff. They're able to supply raw materials. Does Earth desperately need raw materials? No, Earth, Earth is oh, it's demanding it a tiny little bit. A tiny, tiny little bit of raw materials. Do you know what? It might be worth, on this trade route here, just getting, so Earth Lunar Direct, just adding another ship, just adding one of those that just does, oh, not that, no, that would be bad, that just does the um, the raw materials. Where was that? Where's raw materials? There. So why don't we just load that up with raw materials, and that can just go from there. So deliver to deliver it to the moon. They can load it up with raw materials and then they can send stuff, you know, they can send it off to Earth and then the Earth can send it back with, do you know what, let's actually take away five of those things. Let's take away five of, oh no, not that. Which one was it? Which one was it? That one. Yes, there. And then let's add, they must want some other stuff. They must have a, they must have a desire. Hang on a minute. Let's move that out of the way. Moon, what do you want? You must want something colonists. Okay, fine. So we will send some colonists. Absolutely fine. There we go. We'll fill them up with colonists, order it to the moon, deliver some lovely, lovely raw materials to Earth, and Earth can send you back some colonists and whatever else might go in that slot as well. What else goes in there? Dilithium crystals, which we don't think we have, and Stellarium, which we don't have either. But okay, let's order that. And that'll take a little while to arrive. That is absolutely fine. We've not got lots of money anymore, but we do have... 1200 research points. Ah, we could get ourselves one of these. We could get ourselves a Doing 919 and we could replace the ship that we just bought. We could just go and sell that and then see what one of these does. Okay, yeah, I'm game. Let's have that. Let's go for that. You have first, uh, researched your first new ship technology. Go to the purchase ships winner to place an order for this new ship design. I, I very much will. I'll do that right now. So, okay, Earth Lunar Direct. Let's look at what we've got on there. So I want to, yeah, so cancel that. We don't want to do that anymore. That's that's nonsense. I think that's sell, isn't it? Sell the currently selected ship. You receive a percentage of the original purchase price based on the ship's age and condition. Oh, well, it's not, it doesn't exist. <laughs> we've, we've said, can we have a ship? Actually, we've changed our minds. So now on Earth Lunar Direct, go to there. Oh, look, we can buy some exciting new things. So we can get ourselves, oh, right, okay. Well, they, these are quite expensive. They're quite expensive. Right, how fast is it? Like, how fast does it go? Does it tell us about system speed? 0 0.03 AU per day. So what's the current one? 0 0.03 no, AU per day. Okay, what's the difference then? Oh, that's got a bigger cargo bay. That's got... A, oh my goodness me. It's 160 grand. It's got an absolutely gargantuan cargo bay. Oh my word. Wow. Okay, let's order ourselves a space bus for now. I can't afford a 919. I'd love one of those. They look brilliant. And let's do that with it. I'll have that. Yeah, absolutely fine. We'll order it to uh, Earth. Oh, does it need extra things? Does it need extra stuff? Landing spaceport size, four. Manufacture spaceport size, eight. Ah, I can't build it on the moon. I can't build it there. So it has to be built on Earth, but then delivered to... The, okay, we'll put it on Earth and then deliver it to the moon. Do you know what? Whatever. It doesn't make any difference. They can send some colonists. Absolutely. Just order us a shiny new ship, please. 25 days until that's done. Okay, the big ship is loading and unloading. This is very good. So, yes, the space bus might well be making its appearance. There you go, everybody. Look. Look at my space bus. I've got a giant space bus. The space bus is coming and it's going to the moon. So, where is it? Where's the space bus? There it is. There's the space bus. Okay, so all the other ships look like this. The space bus looks like this. It looks like a giant space turtle. It looks like a big space turtle. That's fine. I like space turtles. That's lovely. They're good. Big planet, you know, round disc on their back. It's all fine. But there it is. So it's going through space. Very good. And it should get here. And it will hopefully... Now, did it make us any money there? I don't think it maybe made much in the way of money. Hang on a minute. What is this? Oh, it's a repair ship. I was like, oh my goodness, they've got some gigantic golden, <laughs> some sort of golden mega ship. But no, it's a repair ship. Okay, fine. It's going to go do some repairs. Right, you, you carry on. Oh, hang on one moment right there. Pause the game. When did we start building on Mercury? Oh, we're building on Mercury now. Okay, fine. Well, there we go. I didn't know that. I'd missed all the little notifications there. But yeah, we've got a base on Mercury now. So it's not got a proper star base thing. They're sort of working on that. But... They are on there. There are, what, 
255,000 people living on here, on Mercury, uh, on the planet that's nearest the sun. I mean, what hey, what does it provide? Consumer goods. What consumer goods could you make? <laughs> could you make on Mercury? It's too hot. Just some lava, just lava lamps. Well, that's what it makes. And then some luxuries and some medicine. Medicine I could sort of understand because you know you could get special things from there. Uh, consumer goods and luxuries from a planet that's twelve gazillion degrees C and is mostly just fire. It's you know lava and fire and pain. That's all Mercury is. Okay. Fine, so we're not saying anything to Mercury. That is a bit of a shame. Have we got ourselves the potential for a better rocket? A Neptune rocket has got 10 cargo bays, but it's slightly slower than the Sparrow. Okay, we've got the research points. Let's get ourselves Class A2 certifications, which sounds exciting. So that gives us this Farsha KV-3 rocket thingamajig and a Neptune rocket as well. Okay, and that's the one we're interested in. So research that. Thank you very much. Now let's set up a new trade route going from Earth, because I believe they still... What do they want? Um, Mercury is able to supply food. Ah, really? Really, really? I am painfully surprised by this. I'm very surprised. Um, Okay, well, let's send some machinery, shall we? Some machinery and some colonists over to Mercury. There is the Neptune rocket. It's got extra pointy bits, which must mean it's better at space. So in here, it costs a bit more as well. It costs a little bit more, but it's got double the cargo space. So we're going to send over seven units of machinery and three units of people, three colonists. We'll have a bit of that, please. So start on Earth, deliver it to Mercury. Yes, please. Go and do that. So let's move time on. And then... We'll order another one in a few days, and we'll just then have just several of those going. So we'll have another one there. Obvious evil corporation has built something on Earth. I didn't see what it said. I think it might have been an office. Oh, dearie me, that doesn't bode well for Earth, does it? Goodbye, Earth. Ah, botherations. The reorder thing wasn't on. Hang on, hang on. Let's switch the reorder thing on. Yes, I'll have that, please. Right, send some ships. Do all that stuff again, because I think it actually made us some money. So yeah, we'll do that. Send another ship. Then we'll send another ship about now. And then we'll send it. Oh, no, we won't because we've hardly got any money. Right, let's let's not send any ships because we might go possibly bankrupt. That will be a bad thing. Right, everybody, just make me lots of money, please. Do space trading. Okay, I think we've staved off bankruptcy. I think we actually do make a fairly good profit. So of our routes, the Mercury one has made nine grand so far. The Mars one has made 52 grand almost. The, the Moon one has made 320 grand. And the Ganymede one has made 20 grand. So it's all going pretty well in terms of monies research we could possibly do some more of that let's get ourselves a large office we might as well research that that unlocks the next tier of things that is marvelous and you know what with that i think we'll call it a day for interstellar transport company i think you get the idea with how it works you know we've got the fundamentals in we would just carry on doing the same sort of thing we do more research we send out more trade routes we have to keep an eye on the different demands of places as they change because you know mercury might no longer want to yeah I mean, yeah it was mercury demanding food and water at one point now it's not it's able to supply food and supply water really game mercury Next to the sun, big hot thing. Yeah, where is the sun? There it is, big and hot. You know, generally evaporates water, but no, mercury can supply water by the power of magic. I don't know. So uh, yeah, we'd have to keep an eye on that sort of stuff. And we get the new ships, and we replace the old ships with the new ships, and eventually. I think we'd get the tech, which meant we could go out to one of these. So you go and settle on, wow, it's a brilliant name. Al Kalb, Al Rai, or Betria, or where, where, where's Crab? Where's Crab? There we go. We go and settle on a crab. <laughs> just really annoy him. Just minding his own business. A lot of humans just scuttling about in his shell. So that's the general idea of it. But yeah, it looks like, yeah, it, it might take a long time to get there. It's a very thorough game. There's an awful lot going on. And we've not really done much in the way of the research stuff. We've only got the, what, four research things complete. But I think we're doing okay in terms of performance we're doing all right but i just think yeah you get the idea with how it works and it would just go on from here and i think yeah we've seen enough i think we've seen enough to get the picture of how the game functions and what would happen in the future so let's just imagine that the space royal male go on to crush their competitors and you know astronaut pat becomes the person that is going to actually rule all the transport stuff all the delivery stuff around the whole galaxy because astronaut pat would love that 
He would absolutely love a bit of delivering the space post and the space mail everywhere. So he'd be very happy with that. So let's just picture that that actually did happen. And it would be a lovely, lovely future for the universe, wouldn't it? With astronaut Pat and the space royal mail in charge, it would be brilliant and all our stuff would be on time and it would be marvellous. So there we go. I think, yeah, we'll finish it for now. It's a good point to stop. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. I really hope you have. It's been, it's been good fun playing it. I've had fun with this. If you did enjoy it, then please do leave a like. That would be splendid. And also please do subscribe to keep up to date with all the other nonsense and gubbins that we get up to in the Geek Cupboard. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard and I'll see you next time. This sports car is indeed illegal. You clearly couldn't see the sign saying no cars. I have found the place where I'm going to live forever. The Tea and Biscuits Cafe. I want to rename the dog. Uh, let's call it uh, Waffles. Waffles McBark. Behold the power of the blimp.